we doing today? Well, I don't really have a plan. I'm just kind of, I'm going to go and pull a few pots. I've got some I didn't do yesterday, so I'm going to go and check those today. And then, we'll do some fishing. We might do some fishing before. Oh, I haven't decided. I'll kind of make it up as I go along. And um, this little pot I put down next to a stone yesterday. Um, this actually dries out when it's a uh, big spring tide here. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. There's one stone down there. Like I say a stone, it's it's no bigger than a car bonnet. It's, you know. But, look at that. That shows you. And this actually dries out. You can walk here on a, on a big spring tide. You can walk around where we're over now. I've actually pulled this to move it back a bit because the um, tides are starting to get bigger and my pot will end up on the beach. But that's a nice lobster, that. Such a little pot. Bait's still good. Look at that. Got a little baby one in this. Fine little thing, you think you'd go through the net. You know, this lobster we just had in the uh, lobster master, this thing here, it reminded me of that stone that's there. I said it dries out, or there's a stone that dries out, or a rock. Um, that was actually the first place I ever had a lobster. When I was a small kid, I was down here or looking for the abalone kind of thing, you know. And I was around that rock and I was pushing my hook and I could hear a lobster under there and I couldn't get it out. And this other guy who was collecting at the time, or this man, because I was like, I was only a kid, came over and he gave me a hand to get the lobster out the hole. And that's the first lobster I ever had was from that rock, so pretty cool. But uh, all this time later, <laughs> here's another one. Right, get this baited and get it back down. Or a little greasy bit, a tiny little greasy bit again, that a friend potted on years ago in his boat. He had a small boat. You might have seen him, he came out the, uh, the lighthouse and did some mackling with us. He, uh, I think he had a lobster about five pounds off the street. And then a few years, well, a few years back, I actually had one of about four pounds. So. No, uh, Lobster, but another one of these. We get a lot of these this year. I can get hold of it. Look at that! Great big bream, big black bream. Yeah, I've never seen so many of these this year. It's, it's really good to see them. You get these normally at the other end of the island quite often. You do get them here, but you don't get them. Uh, like in numbers more than that, it seems that they they are turning up. So why well, they keep going in the pots, I don't know. I thought it's because of the mackerel, but I'm not using mackerel in this part. <laughs> and his old bait as well. Now this set of pots, I moved here. Like a here. Um, it's along the edge. Now, I've never really caught decent lobster here. This edge, not whether well, I've tried anyway. I haven't tried that that much. Um, I had small ones here though. I always found these to get a lot of small ones. But like I said, I've potted along this particular bit for a long time. I tend to go up that way more. It's always worth checking marks out that you haven't done or that didn't used to produce because you never know. Under, but it is 
actually size. It's only just size, but the thing is, it's one that's got small claws. Yeah, that's size. So there you go. That goes to show that um, you know some of these spots that never used to sort of really produce much occasionally, you will get something nice. There you go, that's what we've had in the bay today. We've had that nice big one, and that one which is just on the size. And then this nice bream in here. Pretty big bream. And this is all, like I say, close in the bay, and easily within reach of, say, a dinghy or a kayak. You know, you could easily put a pot, or I don't know about the pots I use, but you could use a pot off a kayak, like the ones that they use. And, or a small dinghy. Get yourself a couple of pots in the water, you know, you get yourself some fish, and you can catch fish out here when there's some around. Right, we're going to head out that way, somewhere, and um, we're going to go and see if there's any fish. Well, we've got to stop here on the way. It's uh, a bit of a slow run because we are fighting the tide today. Fortunately, we do have a high frost, uh, high thrust prop on our engine which hey, makes a big difference but it's still a slow run and it's always the case this is a little little fishing spot I get a few pollock and that on quite often it's always gear wherever I go to the fishing mark and you've got all this there's no gear as soon as you go to a little fishing mark and you want to catch something there's bloody lines everywhere and pots or <laughs> there'll be much here. It's been, like I say, very quiet the last few days, so I might try that way a little bit, a bit as well. The tide's higher, it tends to catch well over that side. Really just looking for a few pollock, or not really too keen on the idea of mackerel, but I'm sure I'll cross it off. Sometimes you get two, <laughs> three. I don't know, mackerel. But I'll keep them. The thing is, I, like I said, I didn't bring any bait with me either today, so. I've got to keep a few mackerel. Plus, I might take something to eat. So I'm not going to be out here long today, so give me a chance to get back and actually sort some mackerel out. Sometimes when you come in you just don't want to mess about with fish anymore. Oh. 
might have been the bottom for a minute because I uh, hit the bottom and then it took it. Right, we're going to head over to this other spot while the tide's still in the, ro the way I want it to run for that mark. It needs to be running this way, so we'll go and have a look. Right, this is the, uh, the mark that I come to. I haven't fished this for a year. This only fishes on certain sort of states of tide well. Otherwise it doesn't catch at all. But you get you get mackerel here where you get mackerel everywhere. I mean, the mackerel you get here are enormous usually. We're talking sort of two, two and a half pound fish, which is big by mackerel standards. You do get pollock and stuff here as well at times. Like I say, the fishing hasn't been good lately, so I don't know how well this mark is gonna do, if at all. And it's been a year since I actually fished it, but we need to be back that way a bit. And also, I've got it marked, but I don't have the exact sort of spot, so I need to move around left and right a bit to find the right line where the fish are running. It's very sort of touchy, the spot. Like I say, you've got to be sort of right in the, the right bit of run for it. So it might take us a few attempts. We'll see. kind of a little bit of upwelling here and that pulls bait up or sort of catches small bait fish unaware and that's why the fish are here. You can also lose fishing gear here. I need to spin the boat round really. The uh, line's going on, but the boats are drifting pretty fast. The trouble is, with the winds in the same direction, it's not drift, well, almost. The trouble is, I spin the boat round, you're going to have the sun. Even this tiny little spot, which you know only fishes a certain tide, there's a there's fishing gear here or a crab pot. Seems like everywhere you go these days, you can't get away from it. Well, it's not producing much at the moment. Try a slightly different angle on it. Thank <laughs> you. 
it's a mackerel. I think it's mackerel ever. Put the mackerel up on the way up. Yep, lovely big pollock. It's a nice big one, but it still gets bigger than that. not seeing many. Maybe like I say a bit later on in the year, we'll come back here again. Definitely. Um, later on we might find the real big ones. But a lot of the small ones mackerel have left and you're left with the big ground mackerel. The kind of ones that hang around all the time. There's not huge amounts of them but they are around. Still get bigger. Okay, so we are going to go and check our pots. Now, this may be part of the same video, it might be a completely new one. Time will tell. Now, Closer in, um, obviously a bit shallower. But the idea with this one is that this land sticks out a bit, so it should be well, sh fairly well shielded from really big storms. So if there's any holes along here, it might contain lobsters or shanker. But this is probably more of a lobster one. Obviously. We well, have caught shanker or brown crab just pulling pots off the, the actual rocks before off the cliffs years ago, so and I've had some nice ones. I've even had them in the crab wheels if you've ever seen those videos, but I didn't get one in the video, but in the past. Looks like I might have been right. A bit of shielded land, got three lobsters in there, and I think every one of them is oversized. Again, on an ancient old conger head. A few of these out before they start fighting grabbing each other and breaking each other's claws. Yeah, really. 
There we go, another nice one. And another nice one. size one in there. Very red crab, this is one that if you get them dark like that there's no point in taking them. This one's probably changed its shell or it won't be good basically, put it that way. It'll probably be all stodgy inside. Like I say, they are going out to Finally, we may not have got our um, shank because we got one, but it wasn't that big. And we got this one. This would have been sized, but again, it's not worth taking it because it's a female. On top of that, this one has actually like not changed its shell long. I'm not going to press on it because you can put your finger through them if you're not careful. So I'll let that go. After a while, you don't need to test them. You can see when they're uh, no good. She'll just be full of water. <laughs> 